Fleetwood Mac. But I knew of you before then. L let's go right back and start of when you actually started singing. Well, I started singing when I was very little because my grandfather was a country singer. Right. So my granddad and I sang, seriously, um, duets, which is why I love to sing duets. And so I started singing even, my mother says, when I was really a baby. Right. And I just always loved to sing, and I never took music classes, and I never took glee club, and I never was in, I never wanted to s do that singing. I just sang by myself all the time. And um, I got a guitar on my 16th birthday, and I wrote a song that night. And I never stopped writing since. I didn't get a piano until I was about um, 25. So I played guitar and wrote all my songs on guitar. Now, even though you were singing with, 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 with your family in itself and doing duets, what, in your school days, what did you aspire to be? Was it to be a singer or a musician? Well, I was always to be a singer. Yes? I knew that, I, I think I always knew that I was not, that I didn't have the innate talent, like say, Lindsay, at eight years old, laying around playing the guitar. I mean, he plays the guitar all day long. Well, I played the guitar from when I was 16 until I was, you know, about 25, six. And I, I still play a little, but I didn't ever, it never came in, that innate ability to be Eric Clapton. Right. First, and I waited for it to come in, and it didn't. So when I started to play the piano, um, it was easier for me because all I had to do was like chord, and I could sit there and figure that out, but on a guitar, I was baffled. Mm. You know, even though I play real good rhythm guitar, actually. But I, when I went to the piano, it was like I, I could sit there for days, you know. And I never had a piano. My family never had a piano. So I started writing pretty much on, on piano. I am going to, after this tour that I have been tagging along with, I am going to go home and cut my fingernails off, and I'm going to get an electric guitar, and I'm going to start to work with the guitar again, because I wrote a guitar song last night, and it's, it's another part of me that nobody has seen in a long time. Going back to the first song that you wrote, you said, said you got the guitar and wrote a song. What musical influences um, were Brothers. going around in your mind? Every Brothers. Um, I, could, I would say the Beatles, except for the fact that when I met Lindsay, he was so insistent that I listen to the Beatles for form, for like, here's your verse, here's your one bar, and I'm going, this is a bar down the corner, right? I mean, two bars, and then there's another verse, and, and then you have to have a chorus, and now you have to have a bridge, and I'm going over troubled water, and I don't understand this, you know? So I got a little upset with people that I was forced to listen to. Right. So I was not forced to listen to the Everly Brothers, and I was not forced to listen to R&B, or the Supremes, or the Beach Boys, um, the Four Tops, I, forced I, to listen to the Beatles. But forced to listen to the Beatles. And as much as I love the Beatles, it's like, you know, nobody likes to be, you know, or, yeah. and, and dig this, also the Kingston Trio. So somewhere between the Beatles and the Kingston Trio, I, I kind of burned out a little bit and said, you know, in my own self, quietly, I'm going to go and find what I want to sing and listen to, even though I'll sing what you want me to do and you want me to do and you want me to do when I'm with you, but in my own private time. I'm going to sing to uh, Diana Ross, and I'm going to sing to Aretha Franklin. And that's just the way it is. Okay, so when did you then start taking it seriously in the essence that it was going to be your career and that you would have to work extremely hard to even make something of it, especially in America where everyone would want to be But you see, for me, it was never... I joined... Okay, <clears throat> I met Lindsay. Um, I love to tell this story. I met Lindsay at a, at a, like a, kind of a religious meeting called Young Life that they used to have in high school, when I went to high school. And, uh, of course, everybody just went, of course, to just get out of the house and go and really go to a party. And I met Lindsay, and he was sitting there just gorgeous, playing his guitar. And I walked over to him, and we, we sang California Dreaming. And we sang it perfect, and I'd never met him before. Um, he was a year younger than me, so he was a junior and I was a senior. And um, I didn't see him again after that night until about two years later. And I was like two years into junior college. And he called me up and asked me if I wanted to be in a rock and roll band. And I had been, of course, 
very much Joan Baez. Right. And, you know, very much, and I never got over those blue eyes. But I was also going, pay that a little piece of my heart now, baby. Because I was also really into Janis Joplin. And I was really into Jimi Hendrix. And, like, nobody knew this. My parents knew because my room was like dancing all the time. Right. Um, and I and I, I said sure. I had no idea. For the next five years of my life, not only would I have this relationship with Lindsay Buckingham, but I would also go to college. Five years, going straight through junior to upper, you know, upper college, right. and and have to drive from Stanford University down to. Menlo Atherton, which is like an hour on the freeway at 5.30, and practice until midnight, and then drive back, and also study. And they weren't going to college, so they didn't really care. So what was your motivation to be? I wanted to be in a rock and roll band. Right. And I also realized that I'd found in Lindsay a duet singer, which was my grandfather, right? Which right. Was, was, was that, that, that close Everly Brothers thing that I have, which is what Lindsay and I are really famous for, is that fifth you know, if he's singing this one, I'm singing just an ever so slightly tiny bit t higher than him. Right. And uh, it's Scottish almost, sort of. Um, and also I found an incredible guitar player, you know, who could play anything and who could sit and play you any song, you know. And of course he found in me a whole lot of trouble because I could very easily sit down and with one note go do 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 and write a song not knowing anything about the guitar, which would which, which to this day upsets him and everybody else because something, you know, just says, okay. And I just sit down and I play and it's like, it's not great, but it's a great skeleton. It's a great skeletal thing to give to you and say, mm. here it is, it's very simple. Go ahead and make it into a, you know, make it into a Bo Diddley song, make it into uh, a Led Zeppelin song, make it into a Lindsey Buckingham, Stevie Nicks song, make it into a Stevie Nicks song, mm. you know, which was the, usually the last on the priority, but that was all right because I needed to learn. Okay, so there's this relationship with yourself and Lindsay as far as performers are concerned. Um, to go into and get a recording contract, how did you do that? We moved to Los Angeles in 19, beginning of 1972. We got in my, in my Toyota <laughs> that was Lindsay named The Pocket for In The Pocket, right? In the right. And we drove to... Um, to LA and we lived with uh, Keith Olson, who was our producer, right. who basically kind of like saw us on, a, on the only like little tour we ever did with Leon Russell, which was four shows with Leon Russell, Salt Lake City, San Diego, How did, you get, that? How did you get that? I don't know. But however we got it, I was going, if I had to carry the piano, it didn't matter. And so I got to stand on the side of the stage for four nights and watch Leon Russell play. And I was, I mean, that's an influence. He right. was very much an influence of mine. And so Lindsay and I were seen by Keith Olsen. And so he moved like, he said the whole band, the whole band came down to Los Angeles. We stayed at like the Tropicana Hotel, right? <laughs> Which is the worst place in the world. But in the scheme of your rock and roll life, everybody needs to stay there for a night. And we, uh, we, we got, um, well, what happened was is that the band ended up breaking, they ended up really driving everybody else in the band away. And which, which is what drove Lindsay and I together, because Lindsay and I were never going together in all the three and a half years that we were in the Fritz Rabai Memorial Band. Can you believe this name? Um, we were never, we were both going with someone else. And uh, what happened really, the reason Lindsay and I ever started really going together was because it was kind of so cool that these people in Los Angeles had decided to break this band up. And they succeeded. They broke it up. And so the other three members who were really very good, and they only took me because they knew that they weren't going to get Lindsay without me, and also as a little kind of backup to Lindsay. Mm -hmm. So we signed the Buckingham Nicks contract, and we did we did an album that is is uh, <clears throat> is now ours. Actually, Lindsay and I bought it. It's an and album you shouldn't be. And we may, you know, we may just go back in and like, like we mix a little bit and maybe do a little singing on it. And because it's a, it's I sat, a very good album. I sat in a room with Lindsay for nine months in his father's coffee plant, a little tiny room, little bit in this, while we did half of the songs on that record on a four-track campaign. Like we'd go when the workers went home, we'd go at seven o'clock and we'd stay until six thirty, all night long up the, by the Cow Palace in San Francisco. And I would sit there every night all night long and listen, like to him put like the lead on mm -hmm. So Afraid or, or the seven minute acoustical 
version of Frozen Love, which he just plays all the way through. 